Hi there, Internet Associate. It's Anthony, and I'm here again with my good friend, Island. And we're about to react to another episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So this is season three, episode 18, and it's called Earshot. Got an idea of what earshot means, Kylan? Um, well, <clears throat> when someone says within <clears throat> within earshot of something, they mean usually that you're just in distance of where you can hear it. Mm -hmm. So probably going to be a lot of auditory, auditory, uh, things going on in this episode uh just in terms of where the story is going i feel like we're definitely going to get some some this will probably if this isn't a a plot driven episode this will be the last plot this will be the last like monster of the week type episode and by monster of the week i mean like the kind of like the how the zeppo and the wish were kind of just like self-contained stories within themselves you know mm-hmm so yeah. this will be the last, to me, in my opinion, this will be the last episode that's like that before going into the actual, like, story and getting, setting up for the mayor, because I know that there's going to be, like, a final boss battle with the mayor at some point, and that's just from me knowing how it goes with the big bad and, and Buffy seasons, you know? Yeah, makes sense. Unless they throw a curveball, oh. like, in season two, when they had that Go Fish episode right before the end. Yeah, that's true. But one thing that I'm I'm thinking about is how like is gonna just go away or or die because he doesn't he seems like he can't be beat now. I mean mm -hmm. he's basically like he's basically immortal. Yeah, he and became he's already invincible. sold his soul. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they like if they like left him alive still and then he came back as a later threat. Makes sense. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and see what's about to happen. This is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Season 3, Episode 18, Earshot. Ugh. What the heck? You demons thing can't is ugly. Run and stumble, can you? That was ugly. That is an ugly demon. They're twinsies. You can tell the budget went up to for the costumes in season three. Yeah. What I was mean, that? Gross. No, you saw that thing already. Yeah, I did. That's what I said. Gross. Oh yeah. But yeah, you could tell the budget. They had that, that fat blob for for Balthazar. Oh yeah, that thing was disgusting. These season villains. three is definitely my favorite by far. Yeah. Makes and I'm sense. thinking it's probably going to be like that as we watch it. Like, each season is just going to get better. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Because it seems like even the mis the mistakes that I had or like, the... And I guess I don't want to talk too much about it until we, you know, discuss our final thoughts at the end of the season. But there's just, like, less gripes I have with this season than I did the last two. Just need to put it together. Terribly sorry. I was detained. Official council business. He was probably with Cordelia. Mr. Charles, you were speaking? <laughs> Too shy. Jane Esmondson wrote this. Of course, my work is unofficial. I still sure haven't checked out her blog like you saw me. Of the Giles, in fact... Oh, um, in, in fact, the host... That's not good. ...to the demon. This could be any number of explanations for your hand. I mean, uh, a new fabric softener can cause irritation. In any case, I... I Giles, this is Sunnydale. ...to attempt... B. The school paper is edging on depressing lately. Have you guys noticed that? I don't know. I always go straight to the obits. Oz is so funny. Nothing. Yeah. Why would there be an obituary in the school paper? Well, it's you know, Sunnydale High think, School, man. I don't even think <laughs> that is totally so morbid. Burnt. That's some good world building, though. <laughs> Claws or scales. What? Was it a boy demon? Uh oh. Is this kind of like really are very good. code for an STD? You know, hmm, good question. Look at all this. He's got his filthy adult pierced bras and eyes all over my cordy. Sounding jealous, Sander. <sighs> Still got a mouse. Sorry. Angel, you can't just be popping up like that. It's startling. I would be totally freaked out if I was infected by a demon. Yeah, for real. Especially that mouthless thing. He's still on Cordy. 
Really bugs you, huh? What? Cordelia and Wesley smooching. Man, you read my mind. So you really did. Yeah. Oh, snap. Huh. <laughs> Not the worst infection to get. Yeah, for real. Maybe I'll take French, I said. How hard can it be? French babies learn it. Idiot. Then again, in a high school, it's probably the worst power to have. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not even convinced that this is genuine. I'd be scared to talk to her about this. Most likely projecting. Me too. <laughs> is there something else at work here? Well, he, um, he sort of admits himself that his motives are spurious. He, um, he does things because... This would have been a cool power to have. And... Class, like, I guess. Yeah, for not, real. You really could really person. just cheat exactly. your way through everything. The dark half of Othello himself. Oh. Buffy. Like she really just riffed that. Really? I said something quite like that in my dissertation. I know. I, I mean, <laughs> Othello. She really just exploited. With an like mental all plagiarism. Like we all have Seriously. I'd be mad. Tell us our husbands or our girls. But how could she whatever. even know? Don't exactly. People, protective type people might be drawn to that, I guess. Well, the thing about fake. You can't get into my mind. <laughs> That's funny. Why she not? tried. It's like the mirror. The thoughts are there, but they create no reflection in you. you got your Yo, what the, the heck? In 243 years, I've loved exactly one person. It is me, right? He's like, no, it was this girl back in the 1920s. Yeah, for <laughs> real. What if he was like, <laughs> he went on and we found out a whole other backstory about Angel. <laughs> really? Oh, God. I don't see what this has to do with me. I don't see what this has to do with me. Well, I think it's great, right? I mean, you enjoy your other Slayer powers. Yeah, it'll be fun. And did you see Nancy Doyle's face in English class today? Yeah. She's, She's hardly even human anymore. How can I be your friend now? She doesn't need me. I... I love how Cordelia says exactly what she's thinking, and Willow says the opposite. Yeah. Four times five is thirty. Five times six is thirty-two. Naked girls, naked women, and naked Buffy. God, Xander, is that all you think about? Actually. Yes. Like Xander's like he needs to get out of there. That's not even unrealistic. No, don't look at Cordelia. She's a student. Oh, I am bad. I'm a bad, bad man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this looks overwhelming. Yeah. Wait, what was that person saying about standing in the right place? What? Damn. Yo, what? I mean, I guess I would be helpful. That cut through all the noise. That's the second time they did that on this show. Somebody dropped something and everybody clapped. Remember when we used to start random claps in the cafeteria? Dang. Definitely see why it's called Earshot. Yeah. And her head is getting invaded while she's invading people's heads. In a way. Yeah. Oh, shoot. So hard not to think something. The fact that one of us is just gonna gun everybody down for no reason. Yeah, because that never happened in American high schools. It's bordering on trendy at this point. Besides which, Sunnydale High, center of evil and all that. It's like a school shooting is a tame for some for Sunnydale High. You had sex with Giles. You had sex with Giles. Oh no! I like how they didn't play that. The hood of the. That's what the handcuffs were for. Twice. Okay, I've taken our lesson. That reminds me of Amari. How they just somehow know how many times somebody cheated on someone. Huh. Sorry, but but this is important. Okay, talk to everyone on your list and, and use the sample questions. Today, people. 
And chop chop. I love it when Willow just be like, you know, putting people in their place like, this is what you need to do, now go do it. She loves torturing Jonathan. Powerful and respected. Right, and how much of a strain does it put on you to maintain it? Oh, wow, uh, I guess moderate strain. Is that a good answer? You got any theories on who's gonna, who it is? Yeah, that's good. That Dude, no idea, because that came out of left field, bro. I was just That was suspicious. Yeah. Buffy's being driven mad. We have no proof that this is going to work, and it still requires the heart of the second even, which we have no idea how to get without the Slayer. Negative oh, yeah, and you sword. don't have another Slayer anymore. Cool. But the Vampire with the Soul is also a pretty good option. I forgot they had Angel as an ally. I can imagine classmates are spying on me or otherwise acting suspiciously. Right. Not till just now. <laughs> Fair point. What? Larry. Talk louder, dude. I, I bet he put in like a coming out announcement for you. Something tasteful. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right? I love that Xander has never clarified to him that he's not actually gay. He's the only I got it. <laughs> that was so cool how he just came in. <laughs> that drink looks awfully disgusting though. Yeah, for real. I've always hated the idea of blue drinks. Or really any drink that's any color, honestly. <laughs> this man, Jonathan, is not... Are you kidding me? He's serious. He's not playing around. That's funny how... Remember that last episode they were um, interrogating Jonathan? He turned out to be innocent. So it seemed like that was the case this time, too. Are you all right? I had to do it. And that although death is never easy, it's the only way. Jonathan, oh, I had him in my grasp. Slippery weasel. He so really signed it with his him. name and everything. He really has the tool. Jonathan, this is crazy. You just doing that where anybody can see him? Buffy's about to. That's so cool. Wop this dude. Really? That was. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, that's that's him. Sure, you could have whatever your name was. I could have done that though, for real. No, you shut up. <laughs> This all ties into her problem this episode. Yeah, for real. It's deafening. Why is he all sweaty? Because <laughs> he's been, you know, getting himself riled up. I, I wouldn't ever hurt anybody. I came up here to kill myself. Oh, <laughs> snap. That was a twist Whoa. right there. Yeah, it really was, bro. What? Are oh my. you serious? Wait a minute. So much just happened in that. <laughs> really? This dude is just flipping everything over. Like, really, you're so caught up on that one twist that just happened, then all of a sudden that happens. I didn't even register it at first. So you want to kill them? Logic. Really? There's no logic in that. Look at <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That was such a funny fight. That was such a funny fight scene. That was everything was funny about that. The reveal. And then he ripped out the heart of a demon and fill up some training. Sure. We can work it after school. You know. If you're not too busy having sex with my mother. Burn. Hmm. Oh my gosh. 
All right. So, what were your thoughts on the episode? Um. So, basically, I kind of predicted, or I felt like it was going to be an episode that wasn't too plot driven, or that wasn't really about the main story, and kind of give us a what would be considered a monster of the week episode, mm -hmm. just because it's getting closer to the end of the season, and I know that the next couple episodes are probably going to be definite definite setups to to the main final boss with uh, the mayor happening. Yeah. So for an episode that's kind of like its own self-contained story, I think it was all right. Mm -hmm. um, I like the idea of, of her having all those different thoughts and her having to deal with that. I like how, I like how each, how each, each like monster of the week style episode or like self-contained story is, is now becoming less it's there it's a mixed bag it could be something that's like an actual threat like a physical threat or something that's more psychological mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah yeah I so think... I, I like it, it it's like they're really evolving into into different stories because i felt like in season one it was it was a it was a lot of uh it was a lot of the uh just the straight up monster of the week a physical like a like a like a curse or some type of deal you know what i mean yeah I know what you mean. I also enjoyed that aspect of it. And I felt like I really enjoyed just the way that this episode kept on sort of maybe taking what you would usually expect and then not doing that and kind of giving you the answers from the start in a way to where you're like, okay, well, that's not going to be it. Because like I mentioned earlier, they had that scene in that one episode, I think it was Go Fish ironically which is the one we mentioned at the beginning of this where they were interrogating jonathan and all and then it ended up being a joke because he had just peed in the pool when they thought he had mm -hmm. done something way more dastardly and then they had a mm -hmm. similar scene in this one where she was interrogating jonathan and he didn't really know what she was talking about so it felt mm -hmm. like they were just kind of mirroring that joke when really jonathan was kind of one of the people that they wanted to figure out and then on yeah. the other end or similarly to that Xander immediately was talking about the lunch lady. Like the first thing after Buffy said, somebody wants to kill everybody. Xander was like, I never trusted that lunch lady or something like that. And then lo and behold, it ended up being her at the very end. So I like how it's like they were giving us the answers, but then spinning all these webs that totally threw us off and made you not see any of it coming, especially yeah, the definitely. twist at the end with Jonathan. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, uh, I was kind of, ex I, I wasn't really expecting like a lot, but I was kind of expecting maybe like a, a scene with faith in the mayor mm -hmm. because the previously on had some stuff with faith in it. So I kind of thought maybe they would, they would show us something that has to do with faith, but they didn't. I think that so. might've just been because of Buffy and angels whole thing and Buffy being, you oh, know, yeah. paranoid about faith. So they were just trying to remind us of that situation. So I wanted to ask you, I guess, what you thought about the Jonathan character and the whole reveal of this episode. Uh, it was pretty interesting because I've never really seen him. I like, I like how they've, I well, I like the big twist at the end where where he was like, he was, he's like, oh, I'd never kill anybody else. I was doing this to kill myself. Like mm -hmm. that was pretty. That reveal was pretty cool. Um, it was. It was it was wild to see to see them kind of go with this school shooter kind of thing first, mm -hmm. and like this, and I'm assuming that something happened around this time. Yeah, that was actually one thing that I was really looking forward to telling you about this episode. So actually, this episode ended up happening right. Originally, it was going to air right around when the Columbine school shooting happened, but for obvious reasons they ended up delaying it so like i forget exactly what the timeline was but like they had already filmed this and edited it and everything and had it ready to air and when the columbine shooting happened i think it was just a few weeks after that that this episode was supposed to be airing i can't remember the exact timeline but they were like okay we can't go and air this episode about a school shooting like a couple weeks after the columbine shooting just happened so they delayed yeah. it and i think they didn't air it until like um, you know, I don't know, like the after the season was done or something later, I forget the exact timeline on that. And maybe we'll see it when we look up the facts. But so it was definitely something that was unintentionally timely. And I bet if Columbine would have happened before they wrote this, they probably wouldn't have even tried to do this episode. Yeah. So I thought that was a 
Uh, that's just a. It's just crazy how like much that lined up with things. I think. Yeah. Really. Yeah. That is a a funny coincidence. Also, what I wanted to say about Jonathan was just um, I was gonna talk about how cool I thought it was that they've kind of built it up to this point. Like I believe I mentioned to you before how they just keep on peppering in these little moments of Jonathan, you know, having these awkward interactions or like somebody picking on him. Like that time that Cordelia was trying to talk to Harmony and all them. And they were like, here's the perfect guy Mm -hmm. for you. And they pointed at Jonathan or like at the party when Buffy just randomly yelled at Jonathan. Like, what are you looking at or something like that? When he was by the chips, like she was like, you buy the chips, like just all those little random moments or in Inca mummy girl all the way at the beginning of season two, when Jonathan was almost getting killed by that Inca mummy girl. It's like he's just been going through so much this whole series already that it makes yeah. sense that at this point he's like, you know what, I'm just ready to end it all. <laughs> because we have literally <laughs> seen all the stuff that this guy has been going through. And it's like you don't even think about it until now. And I feel like that's so like apropos for how his character feels. He's been going through all this and nobody really pays attention to him. Just like a lot of viewers probably didn't even pay attention to Jonathan, even though he's been in like practically every other episode up until this point, it feels like. A lot of people yeah. don't really pay attention to him until this episode. And it's like, oh, yeah, like, dang, he has been going through it, huh? I know I've mentioned Danny Strong to you before on the show and told you, like, you know, how he was in Mad Men and Gilmore Girls and everything. Mm-hmm. And that was just because I knew you had seen those shows. So you might remember him from them. But, you know, he's also like a really successful screenwriter now. Like he wrote he made Empire, the TV show. He wrote Hunger Games, Mocking. He wrote one of the Hunger Games movies or maybe two of them, maybe the Mockingjay ones. And some other stuff, too. Like, he's a really successful screenwriter now and has been, you know, um, in some pretty big acting roles. Mm, dang. Yeah, and I mean, it shows he's talented just from his work in this episode. I mean, he did a yeah, good job, really. I think. That was definitely, you know, cool of them to trust him to be able to pull this off, given that he had only been doing comedic stuff up until this point, just little one-off stuff. Yeah, for real. Jonathan is definitely a... Uh... Slipped on character. They brought back a lot of supporting characters, like even uh, Larry. Is that his name? Yeah, Larry. Yeah, the, the and I, it's glad I I like that they like kept his storyline going too, and it like now he's like out and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. I remember the first time we saw him, like he had, he was like discovering that he was gay, mm-hmm. and he was like, yeah, I guess I'm gay. And then mm-hmm. now he's and now he's out. And it's, it's just, I thought it was kind of funny him being like trying to get uh, trying to get Xander to put like a tasteful announcement in the <laughs> in the school paper. In the school paper. So like, yeah, I thought. I mean, like Larry's character has definitely been another cool sort of background character that is fun to sort of see progress, even if it's just in the background with a few mentions here and there. I said Jane Espenson wrote this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's definitely, um, I mean, she's definitely a, a, one of the great writers of the show. I know the last episode that I specifically remember her writing was a controversial one for us because it was Band Candy. Which, oh, yeah. Know, Band Candy when they were selling the 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 candy and then it, it, it turned them all rebellious. It turned all the parents into like kids, yeah. basically, because the mayor yeah. was trying to, you know, feed all these babies to his snake demon that he was worshiping and all that stuff again yeah, yeah. that's like a fan favorite episode apparently but you know we were saying how we that's didn't kind completely of like crazy the because they because giles and and buffy's mom had sex in that episode then that's yeah. crazy how she like kept her kept her little plot line like developed that's a good point that is a, that's a really good point and remember because Joyce had pulled out the handcuffs and Buffy was like, never tell me. And then this episode, yeah, yeah they brought up, she read her mind. I wonder if yeah, she probably did that intentionally. Like, oh, I'm going to bring back this thing to the other episode that I wrote. Yeah. It just speaks to the to the world building, I guess, really. Like yeah. everything, everything is already established. And then they kind of just like slowly roll it out back to you. Like everything happens, happens has a consequence, even if it doesn't seem like it's going to have a consequence. Yeah, definitely. That's like, one. What do you say? One thing, and I know you always tell me not to to scroll on the subreddit, but one thing, one thing I, I've seen on the Reddit about Xander cheating is a lot of people think that like he didn't get his consequences, you know. Mm-hmm. And and sometimes I feel like people will say like, like it just seemed like all that happened for 
for just for it to happen. But I, I honestly personally feel like Xander is getting his consequences like later on. And because like I was kind of in that minority, too, where I was thinking like Xander wasn't really like it. They were just, to me, the Zeppo episode came too early. Mm-hmm. I feel like if I feel like I don't know where I would have placed it. In, in the lineup, but I would have placed it later, way later than then. But even so, even with that being said, I'm still feeling like Xander is getting some of his redemption back with having to see Cordelia and, and Wesley all together. And now also Willow and uh, Oz together at the same time too. Like, I feel like, I feel like slowly I'm starting to come back around to Xander. Oh, well, that's good. Because just a few episodes ago, you were saying you didn't think he could ever. I mean, not you didn't think he could ever do anything to be redeemed, but you said you just had a tough time imagining what he could do. So, I mean, yeah, yeah that's cool. And I definitely think Xander's, you know, his whole character progression, it feels like it's something that has also kind of been happening in the background, just because they don't make it as overt that the things that he says and does is meant to be wrong and everything. It kind of feels like they just have him say something bad and then just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think sometimes that like, you know, definitely makes people just kind of dislike Xander. So, and then like the consequences he faces, like you said, oftentimes aren't super overt. So that's an interesting thing to point out. And I guess something to continue to be on the lookout for, but definitely like, like I said, like the Reddit though, I mean, I know, you know, but just like, I mean, like that Buffy stuff, Reddit is not the place to be, man. Like, it's really not, you're going to, it is a spoiler minefield. Trust me. You do not want to go there at all or anywhere that has anything to do with Buffy or Joss Whedon or anybody that's ever been on Buffy or anything at all because it is mo- it's guaranteed to be a spoiler minefield. All right, sure. all right. I'm but yeah. also unsubscribe. One thing that I was thinking while watching this, because I did kind of remember this episode from having seen it before, and I remember for the most part where it was going. When Buffy was talking to Jonathan about, you know, like why he shouldn't shoot up the school and everything, and she was saying how... Well, yeah, I I don't think bad about you. I don't think about you at all. Nobody thinks about you. And everybody's thinking about their own thing and all this other stuff. While that was good advice, and it was good advice for what she was saying, given that it seemed like he was about to kill everybody, it almost seems like looking back on it, everything she was saying to him wasn't necessarily the best stuff to say to a suicidal person, as opposed to somebody who's about to shoot up a school. (laughs) Honestly, context is everything. And I think Buffy yeah. really did kind of screw the pooch on that one. Like, I wouldn't have been surprised if they would have just made him, like, still killed himself, even though regardless of what she said. And then, like, then Buffy would have had to just live with the fact that she thought it was a school shooter instead of it being somebody who was suicidal. But I feel like that would have been an extra dark turn for them to go with that. And I don't know. And I'm not saying objectively that the things she said were the wrong thing to say to a suicidal person. I really don't know. And I mean, like, I mean, maybe it was right. And obviously it worked on him. It was just something I was kind of thinking. I was like, "Ooh, this this kind of stings," but I get the point that she's making with it, and I can yeah, still, me too. I and I can still understand how it would have helped, how it could help him, even with him not being homicidal but suicidal. So, I mean, it's still a fair thing to say. But oh, and I texted you about this, Kylan. I never said it on video, but I just realized how dumb it is that he was about to commit suicide with a like scoped rifle. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> he really was. He really he ups up there with like a sniper, <laughs> like we're like sniper rifle. I'm like, what were you, like? There was no way that was going to work. So here's some facts about this episode. Oh, Jane Espenson says that the fact Joyce and Giles had sex under the influence of the chocolate bars and band candy was confirmed in this episode because she was shocked that fans still weren't sure about it. So <laughs> it does show that it was something intentional by her since she wrote it. In her DVD commentaries for the episode, writer Jane Espenson reveals that when she found out that she was going to write this episode, she knew that she wanted the student in the tower to be Jonathan. Even though Danny Strong had only had small comedic parts on the series over the years, she had faith that he would be able to handle the dramatic scene. The final scene in which Giles walks into a tree was not in the shooting script. It was a last minute addition by Anthony Stewart Head intending to provide the scene with more comic relief. Hmm. That's cool. Actor choice. That's yeah. nice. This episode subject matter in conjunction with the mass shooting at Columbine High School, which occurred a week before the intended air date, of this episode. Wow, just one week. That is such a coincidence. Led the WB to postpone this episode's broadcast. The episode finally aired on September 21st, 1999, two months after the season three finale. Due to the long delay, Earshot was aired in other countries before it was shown in the United States. 
Sarah Michelle Geller lobbied hard for this episode to be released on schedule. She thought it was great and would help those affected by the Columbine tragedy. What do you think? Do you think that would have been better or that they should have delayed it? Um, yeah, I feel like they should have delayed it just just because like nobody's ever ready to deal with anything like that after as soon as something happens. Yeah, I kind of agree, especially if it was just one week afterwards. And also, I mean, it is kind of a different situation. You know, the Columbine, they really shot and killed people. And this one, it's yeah. like, I bet that they wish that Eric and Dylan were just suicidal, actually, and hadn't yeah. went and killed a bunch of other people. So it's, I don't want to say it's like a slap in the face, but it's like, you know, it's not, you know, it's it's kind of a different thing. So it probably wouldn't, I, I mean, maybe it would make some people feel better, but I don't know. I think they did the right thing in delaying it. All right. So that'll do it for this one. Thank you all for watching. Go ahead and leave a comment down below and let us know what you thought about this episode. Like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more. Also, you can go over to Patreon if you're interested in seeing the full uncut reactions weeks ahead of the YouTube schedule. Until next time, I'm Anthony. And I'm Kylan. And we'll see you all later. Goodbye.